Okay. So it's become apparent to me that you guys enjoy me speaking off the cuff like this sometimes. And I feel like it's about time that I, that I touch on this. I'm going to try to edit this video in a way where there's not many cuts because I really do want this to be raw and my honest thoughts, and they really are, uh, coming from a place of rationale and trying to suppress as much emotional feelings as I can. Just speaking straight off of the cuff, only facts, only the truth. Israel, Israelis, and Jews are a colonizing force a white supremacist colonizing force to the Middle East and to the Levant and to Palestine. And I want to tell you guys the history in not so much of a distant past, not so long ago, Jews came from a very far away place. They nestled in historic indigenous Palestine, taking over a native population, outgrowing them in numbers, and bringing in a foreign language, a foreign religion, belief system, and a foreign culture. They did this in a way to disrupt and take over historic Palestine and set up their roots there to take over the world or at the very least the Middle East and North Africa parts of Asia as well the Jews did this not only in Palestine they did this in Morocco in Algeria in Egypt we all know about the Egyptian Empire which was in no way Jewish they did this in Lebanon and in Syria and in Iraq and in Iran. They stretched out all the way to Indonesia, Philippines, Borneo, Malaysia, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, places that were at one point Buddhist or Hindu were taken over by Jews. And I'll explain something further to you. When the Jewish people came and, and, and imported these religions, cultures, they didn't do it peacefully. They came and they replaced societies. They replaced kingdoms, languages. They, they destroyed cultures, erased them off the face of the planet. The Jews did so much damage to this world, erased so much history, so much precious history, erasing so many cultures in the way that researchers estimate that we might have lost the percentage of over 60 to 70% of history from the cradle of civilization, stuff that's gone forever, that, that will never be able to be recovered again. And the crazy part is, the Jews held that power for such a long time, till now. And Jewish influence is ripe across the Middle East and North Africa. I mean, every government, every country in this region is completely Jewish. The Jews have effectively taken over this part of the world. There was an indigenous population in Palestine a population that has existed there for as long as recorded history is there. Yeah, they fought a few battles to get there, the indigenous Palestinian people. But they've been there for seemingly the last 5,000 to 6,000 years. And it's documented, well documented history, not just in religious books. And when the Jews came, they took all of that away. It was a system of ethnic cleansing, of white colonial colonization, white supremacy, and oppression. And now, no matter what 
If for some reason YouTube brought up some sort of subtext infographic below this video to tell you guys what is fact of what I'm saying and what is not, I'm not sure that it will. But if it did for some reason, ignore it because everything I just told you is the rock solid truth. Jews don't belong in the Middle East, in North Africa. They don't belong in these places in Asia. Jews came in, they imported this culture from far away to take over, to create a dynasty, multiple dynasties, a kingdom with a religious doctrine that converts you by the sword. Convert or die. That's what Jewish people used to do. Convert or be killed. Convert or exile. And for the, for the local populations that somehow survived the onslaught, decided to stay, second-class citizens, taxes. The Jews would charge taxes. They would, they would, they would treat them, the local populations, like second-class citizens. Yeah, there were brief periods of times where the Jews got along with other populations in the Middle East, North Africa, Palestine, but for the most part, they took over brutally. I want you to play a little mind game, a little experiment, if you may. The story of the Jews I just told you, which we all know is objectively true. Replace the word Jew with the British Empire. It's horrible, right? This white colonial force from Europe, from an island stretching across the world, taking over everything. It's disgusting. Place it with the Greeks, with the Romans. I mean, it's warranted condemnation. It's an injustice that happened in history that as, as a global community, people who are aware of history and culture and religion, we need to call it out for what it is. These are injustices that happened. And no matter which group of people you replace that with, that word, Jew, no matter which group of people, they all warrant condemnation. Or at the very least, recognition that this happened, that these events happened. But for some reason, for some odd reason, globally, when we replace the word Jew with Arabs or Islam, for some reason, facts in the history they just dissolve into dust they disappear and facts in history no matter how true they are and how much evidence exists in them and how much how how much they are facts they cease to be important Contrary to what I told you, if this is a massive surprise to you, the story that I told you about with the Jews isn't what happened. Somewhere around 1,600 years ago, Arabs developed their culture, language, and dominant religion of Islam in the Arabian Peninsula, centered around Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states. This religious doctrine, this culture, and most importantly, this language, Arabic, was imported far and wide across the planet. There's a region of this world called the Levant. It's also known as sort of the sister area or a synonym with the cradle of civilization, stretching from the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in Iraq, all the way down to the Mediterranean coast and the Egyptian empire.
When the Arabs made ground across planet Earth, most notably the Middle East and North Africa, their rage and their war path ran them straight to Jerusalem. There was a well-documented group of people that inhabited that land for thousands of years before the thought of Islam ever came about. Before the idea of what an Arab could be even came about. Their stories were not just told in cave paintings or in religious books, but in scrolls found in the ground, in religious texts, in well-documented Roman archives, in maps, in architectural plans, in poems, and in books. The native population, the indigenous population of this land, of historical Palestine, is well documented. And for some reason, it doesn't matter to anyone. I'll take this whole analogy and metaphor and I'll, I'll, I'll bring it into something that maybe makes it even easier to think about. When the Jews were being cleansed from Europe during the Holocaust, in World War II, and the Jews were being cleansed from the Middle East post the establishment of the modern state of Israel. Do you think that the reason that the Nazis kicked Jews out of their countries and tried to kill them was because they were Jewish Germans or Polish Jews? Do you think the reason that they did that is because they were from there but just happened to practice a different religion? Do you think that the Jews of Iraq, my family, that endured the horrific Iraqi Farhud were in one night Iraqi citizens, not the government, decided to cleanse Jewish people from Baghdad and the surrounding area, murder them in their homes, decapitate them, take all of their wealth, and strip them of their Iraqi citizenship and kick them out of the country. Do you think that when they did that, they recognized that Jewish people were Iraqi, Arabs, they practiced a different religion. They were Jewish. Do you think that they made that distinction? I really want you to take a second and think about it. Because if you're telling me that that's the case, then as a Jew who stems from Iraqi Turkish heritage, I must find my ancestral homeland in Iraq or Turkey, right? That's where I'm from. Because, I mean, my grandparents in Iraq, they grew up speaking Arabic. They ate Iraqi food. But for some odd reason, for the 2,000-year-old history that I know about in my family in Iraq, every single year, every single Shabbat, they'd gather around a table together. Or when they were in synagogue, they would say the words, next year in Jerusalem. And to my knowledge, Jerusalem is neither in Turkey nor is it in Iraq, nor is it in Poland or Hungary or Austria. It's not in Spain, it's not in Uganda, it's not in North America. It's in one place called Palestine, historical Palestine. Jerusalem, next year in Jerusalem, a sentence that's been uttered by my family for 2000 years and somehow Somehow, I'm a colonizer. My parents are war criminals. My grandparents are white supremacists. Somehow, and somehow that history, that fabrication of the truth has warranted a group of homicidal, baboons to, to slaughter 
people who happen to share the same citizenship as me. Somehow that history, that fabrication of the truth has justified people all over the world, millions of people in the streets of Iraq, in Yemen and Iran, London and Paris, Los Angeles, Miami, New York, Philly, even, even in the Philippines, Manila. It somehow has justified people running to the streets, yelling the words, free Palestine. From the river to the sea, cleanse Palestine. Bring back its indigenous people. Those same Arabs that colonized the Middle East and North Africa, that stretched out to Indonesia and the Philippines, Borneo, Albania, and Kosovo, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, which at one point in history were Hindu, which at one point in history were Buddhist, were pagan, were Pacific Islander, Somehow, somehow, the Levant is ancient, historical, Arabian, Islamic land. And that's the truth. That's the world we live in. If that's not the biggest injustice, and if that's not the biggest lie that all of us can go to sleep at night and tell ourselves, I don't know what is. Now to many of you watching this video, you might think, get over it, it's a religious fight, it's religion, let it go, it's stupid. It's all about religion. Or maybe some of you guys will just look at it and be like, it's just land, let it go, it's just land, move on. How could a war like this still be going on in 2023? And that's when I'll tell you to kindly and very respectfully shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. There are complete cultures, religions, and histories that were wiped off planet Earth, erased, will never be able to recover them. Because of the pure and utter, and there is no replacing this word, the pure, perfect colonization that happened by Arabs in the Middle East and North Africa. From Morocco to Indonesia, the three Islamic caliphates that took over planet Earth at one point in time, raped, pillaged, murdered, and mass converted people by the sword similar to how the Romans did and the Greeks did and the Persians, the Byzantines, the Ottomans. We don't look at these empires with pride. We don't uplift those empires and say, these were the indigenous people because at one point in time, they took over. It's disappointing, but not surprising. As a Jew, you grow up being told by your parents that everybody hates you. As a Jew, as a Jew, you, you grow up in this world knowing that people want to kill you for who you are. I don't know that I could name any group of people on this planet that globally have to sort of look over their shoulder. I don't know if I can name another group of people. And again, our history, it's so well documented. And it's not just from religious texts. It's not just the Bible. You can look it up anywhere. There are so many proofs in written history, documented photographs of the persecution of Jewish people globally. And for some reason, for some odd reason, this persecution, this righting of a wrong, this 
decolonization is questioned to be some sort of gross violation of humanity. For some reason, the undoing of thousands of years of persecution by every major empire on this planet against a tiny population of people that is so insignificant in the grand scheme of things, for some reason, the undoing of all of that trauma and getting dignity and sovereignty back is seen as some sort of disgusting violation of humanity. While in Yemen, 100,000 Arab babies could die in Turkey and Syria, millions. Lebanon, all across North Africa, Nigeria, Mauritania, Chad, Niger, Algeria, Libya, Iran, the persecution, the oppression of Muslims globally, it happens in the millions every day. But the only one that matters, the only one that really matters is the Palestinians. But yet, as a global community, you don't give a fuck, do you? You don't really care. When you watch this video of me telling you the truth, you're either typing away a shitty comment about your fake narrative reality of what the situation is, or you're putting a free Palestine and a Palestinian flag and getting on with your day. But the second that the news stop talking about it, the second that people stop caring, so do you. It's just like the rest of them. While me and my family have to carry that burden for generations, that generational trauma, that anger, that disgust, the hatred, the fear, the persecution, the, the generational PTSD that's brought in from one kid to another, from mom and dad to their child, you get to go on with your day. Go play your fucking video game, go listen to Spotify, Go for a run. Enjoy yourself. While I have friends risking their life, I have family members who are stuck in a loop of depression and anxiety. While I know people who have had family members kidnapped, people burned alive, but you, at the end of the day, are all that matter because you spoke up. You said free Palestine. You put a Palestinian flag in the comment section of a shitty Instagram post or a YouTube video, and you carried on with your day. You shared a few, blo a few blocks on, on Instagram stories. You shared a reel or two. You sent people a donation link, maybe even donated 20 bucks. You're doing the right thing. You're righting the wrong. You're clearing the injustice. Palestine should be free. There's no doubt about that. Palestinians deserve to live in dignity and peace. There is no doubt about that. If there's anybody rationally saying that Palestinians don't deserve to live in peace and prosperity and happiness like any other nation on planet Earth. I would be the first one to stand up and condemn them. The first one. I'd cut everybody in line. I'd be the first one to stand up and say, I condemn that. But I'm a strong believer in facts and I'm, I'm an even stronger believer in history. I could give a fuck about what religion says. And I, I'm somewhat spiritual, I'm somewhat religious, but I could give a fuck about what the religion says. I don't care what Christianity says, Judaism, Islam, I don't care what Buddhism says or Hinduism. In this particular context, it's about facts. It's about history. 
It's about what's true and what's not. People have to take responsibility for their actions. And sometimes, in rare instances on this planet, the crimes and injustices of a certain population are pinned onto another. And all of a sudden, all those problems and all those injustices are brought onto the backs of a different population to deal with. I'm gonna paint you a picture. You're sitting in your cozy house in Los Angeles and you're watching a movie on Netflix and then you hear a siren go off. It's 4 p.m. on a Tuesday. You look out your window, you don't see anything going on, you just hear a siren. You get an emergency Amber Alert on your phone, find the nearest bomb shelter, you have 12 seconds. And run. You don't know where the fuck a bomb shelter is in Los Angeles. You've never had to think about a bomb shelter before in your life. And then you see it from the window in your house. You see a line flying across the sky and you see it hit somewhere in the middle of LA. big boom you're a massive boom and you hear people screaming you hear ambulances you see people dying you can see it all from your window and the sirens not going off and you wonder in your head it should be over now you get a you get a momentary relief and then you see it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And you look out your window, and you see a barrage of white streaks across the sky. 4,000 of them. And you realize at some point, you realize that you're going to die. What would you do in that moment? How would you remedy the situation? Would you wish that you had a sophisticated defense system to protect you and the people of Los Angeles from this onslaught of missiles coming down on the city? Now, to your knowledge, there's no civilian or there's no military bases smack dab in the middle of downtown Los Angeles, to your knowledge. Maybe the person lobbing those rockets knows something that we don't. But to your knowledge, which is important, there's no military base in the, in the middle of downtown LA. And those screams and terror that you hear, the fires, the smells, the sounds that you're hearing, they don't sound like, they don't sound like military folk. You don't hear gunshots firing at the rockets. You just hear what you presume are people dying. What would you do? What would you wish for in that moment? And what would you think if when all of it was over and you somehow survived, you went on Instagram and said, and saw people posting, fuck Los Angeles. People in LA need to die. What would you do? How would you feel if when you went on social media, you would see posts justifying rockets being lobbed at civilian populations in downtown Los Angeles? What would you do? What would you think? And imagine if you had a conversation with your grandma that same day and she told you when she lived in New York City, 50 years ago when she was a kid growing up, she went to school and sometimes buses would blow up. Sometimes it would there would be people who board buses full of civilians 
and, and blow themselves up. Sometimes she'd be sitting at a coffee shop in Manhattan and people would just start stabbing innocent bystanders on the street. And that's the world that your grandma grew up in, in New York City. And to your knowledge, between the boroughs of Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and the Bronx, there's not many military bases. Between Wall Street to Midtown, there's none that you know of. And so why did your grandma, and how did your grandma live in a place, and grow up in a place, where buses would get blown up with innocent civilians on them and stabbing attacks would happen. And how would you feel if you went on social media and carried your grandma's pain in your heart and carried that history, that trauma in your heart? If you went on social media these days and saw people calling those people freedom fighters, calling the people who stabbed innocent civilians in New York City. Those people are freedom fighters, fighting for freedom. The people who would blow up buses, let's just say it had a name called an intifada. The people who blow up the buses those people are righteous martyrs of a religion, of an ideology, of a nationality. What would you think? What would you feel? What kind of burden would you carry in your heart when you saw that on social media? I use all these stupid analogies and ideologies because it's the only thing I can imagine it's possible to communicate with the outside world without being Jewish because for some reason, our history doesn't matter. And for some reason, when it comes to us, the truth doesn't matter. Context is important. Context is gravely important. Those people who commit those horrific acts where your grandma grew up, believed that they were freeing the place from an evil population of people, which were civilians. But those civilians weren't all Christians, they weren't all Jews. Some of them were Muslim, some of them were Hindu, some of them were Buddhist. They came from all over the world, but it didn't matter to those freedom fighters. Those freedom fighters, what mattered to them is that they blew up a bus full of civilians. And people nowadays honor them by calling them militant groups and freedom fighters. Folks, there's an injustice in this world that's so deep rooted and systemic that as a 27 year old guy who grew up in the West, I can't seem but to look around and be absolutely petrified for where we're going as a society. If what you saw on the news in this last week bores you, but you felt the need to post an Instagram post about it or to share a reel, and if by today on day eight or nine, you're bored or you don't care anymore, or you don't wanna see it anymore, you wanna talk about something else, go fuck yourself. We have to carry this burden as long as you don't want to. When you're done caring, we take it. We care about it. Israelis and Palestinians. When you beg on social media for a ceasefire, or when you share posts with faux statistics, 
on either side, when you share fake news or try to justify horrific news, looking for proofs, and in a week you're done, you're tapped out of the race, go fuck yourself. I'm beyond disgusted with what I've seen from the actual actions committed by Hamas in the last week against people of my country to the rallying behind and support that they have received. And I wanna make a very clear distinction. I'm disgusted, but not shocked. I'm horrified, but not shocked. If you were to tell me that this would happen a month ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, when I was five, I wouldn't be surprised. Because since I was a kid, people have been telling me that people hate you because you're Jewish. And the truth could not be more apparent than now. To whoever follows me and loves this channel and has gotten the proof that I'm not some sort of Islamophobe or racist, that I don't hate any particular group of people on this planet, and you can see on my channel through the videos that I've created in the nine years that I've been traveling around the world, I'm open to every religion and every group of people. And it doesn't matter where you're from, come as you are. I can't but be absolutely sick to what I've been seeing globally this week. People watching this video and I don't speak to people who are in support or not in support, but generally, you should be disgusted with yourself. And I really say this to most people. You should be absolutely disgusted with yourself. That without any family members or any ties to the conflict, you feel like the need to talk or to speak up for one side or the other. And when you see gross, disgusting, clear, horrific acts with video and picture evidence by the perpetrators, you look for proof. You look for a clear sign because you can say fake news. My side wouldn't do that. Fuck you. You get to go to sleep at night and not care after. 90% of you who watch this video, you get to go to sleep at night and you get to not care anymore. You get to erase the images from your head, you'll grow out of it. To you, will just be it'll just be another fraction or proxy war or something. You get to escape this reality. You get to not care. You get to move on to whatever is the latest form of activism whether it's climate change or animal rights or, or something about gender equality, the wage gap. You get to move on to something else, a different war, Russia and Ukraine. You get to move on, you get to do something else, you get to think about something else. You've proved it to me, you've proved it to us that you don't really care. You don't really care about Palestinian lives. You don't really care about Israeli lives. I mean, some of you, it's clear as day that you really don't care about Israeli lives. Whether they be Muslim or Jewish or, or Christian, you don't care. You've proved it to us that you don't care about the 22 plus different nationalities that have either been taken hostage or murdered, burned alive by Hamas oper operatives. You have proven it to us that you don't care. And so sorry, somebody like me who loves everybody and takes everybody as an individual in life, I can't help but to be disgusted with what I've been seeing. There are facts and there is history 
and there's a distorted version of reality. It's not my job, it's not the Jew's job to give you the facts all the time. You have the world at the palm of your hand and all it takes is to ask a question and read a source. The history is so clearly available to you. You cannot scream human rights. You cannot yell human rights violations. You cannot demand action if you don't truly care about what you're talking about. And if you don't truly know the causation to the things that you're seeing, you cannot speak about them. You can, but you're a fucking asshole. That's the reality. You're a fucking douche. You don't understand what you're seeing. And worst of all, you don't care. And that's what makes it the worst. If you cared, if you gave a shit, you'd find out that you either have no right to talk about it or you're on the wrong side of history. But again, you don't care. You just want to feel good. It's selfish. So this video is just here to put you down a little bit. Because in this last week, I've learned that bullying people who don't know what they're talking about, it's not a bad thing. And I think like I know my audience, whatever, whoever's left in here, I think a lot of you would agree with me. That some people in this world, some people who sympathize with terrorists deserve to be bullied. There's a distinction to be made between caring for innocent civilian life. But there's nuance to everything. And if you don't see it, you're as good as the BBC. You're as good as CNN and Fox News. You're as good as the mainstream media. Whose only objective is to pin us against each other and make money. If you want to repeat those same talking points, I have zero respect for you. If you feel like you need to shove your nose into every nook and cranny that you see about this conflict and you think you understand because you read some shitty infographic on Instagram for 15 seconds of your day or watched a few shitty reels, you watched some horrific videos and all of a sudden you felt like you need to be an activist, go fuck yourself. You're an idiot. Your intentions aren't pure. You don't actually care about the human life that you're seeing ending on your screen. You want to feel good. In the last week, I've had to see and experience and feel a feeling that my generation of people who come from Israel have never had to experience yet. We've been told stories. We've been prepared for this. But the feeling of being in this moment and our life literally changing in front of our eyes, it's, uh, it's a feeling I cannot, I cannot even begin to explain what it feels like. I've had to say goodbye to friends who are, who are now deployed. I've had to speak to family members and, and feel the horrific energy of what they're feeling and the fear and hear people crying and comforting people and, and, and being strong and being there for people when you don't actually know where this is going. And at the same time, being somebody who never served in the army, who's was not qualified to go and fight, not that I think I would want to, in this scenario anyways, but feeling useless. This is what I feel like I can add to the table. I could give less of a shit if this video gets views. I don't care. Hell no, knowing YouTube, it probably won't, but there's a good chance it's because it's topical and I'll probably make some shitty clickbait thumbnail. Maybe it will get views. I don't know. 
but this is what I feel like I can do to speak up for my people, to be a testament to what we're going through collectively. Every time I see some shitty YouTuber putting up a free Palestine post or free Gaza or Israel as a colonizer on their Instagram story, I lose more respect for the world that I'm living in. Every time that I see this, and being Israeli, being a Jew, I haven't had the passion or the desire to upload a single video on this channel. I haven't had the passion or desire to speak about anything, especially since the next video that's coming out on this channel is all about Muslims and Islam and my great experience with Muslims around this world. The burden of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the Israeli-Arab wars that we've endured as Jews, this collective trauma that we feel, this lack of safety that actually exists globally around the world for Jewish people. It's, it's, it's burdening and it hurts and it's mm -hmm. accumulating and it's so clear to see nowadays, especially with this scenario. It is so, so clear to see what is going on. It's like we've had thousands of years to prepare for it. Hundreds in the modern era, decades, the last 75 years of having a state, of having a home, of having an army. And we've had time to prepare for a moment like this in the world. And it still feels so shitty. It sucks. And it hurts. And I hate it. And there are people that are dealing with situations way, way worse than what I'm dealing with. Because I'm not dealing with anything. I'm hiding away because I feel scared to go outside. Because I, I feel uncomfortable to travel. I feel uncomfortable to do my job. I've scrapped all my plans. Because just two days ago, there was a global call on attacking Jewish people around the world. And then people followed up. And people did it. And that when I upload this video, I'll get death threats. Because even before the news broke out that Israel was doing some sort of counteroffensive, when it was just known, when it was only known that Hamas was attacking Jewish people, I already got death threats. I already had people messaging me saying that I'm a piece of shit. I'm disgusted. The world we live in is absolutely vile. And traveling all these years, I've learned about just how unjust our world is and how mean-spirited and disgusting human beings can be. But this week, I guess since it hit so close to home, because it literally hit home, it's, it's just so clear. And that feeling, that feeling sucks. It really sucks. Being that I've been talking for almost an hour, uh, I think I'll probably come close to ending this now, but it's just, if there's a note I can end on, it's don't be a fucking asshole. Don't be an idiot. If you watch this video to this point or if any segment of this video, if you just skip through, mm -hmm. do your own research. Google what is actually going on and then Google the reasons for why situations are happening the way that they're happening. If you think you understand this conflict, you don't. Because there are people smarter than me and you who still don't understand this conflict, who don't have a solution. You don't have the answers. You don't know what's right and what is wrong. And that includes civilians dying on both sides. You cannot distinguish what is right and what is wrong. Civilians dying 
is not your determining factor for a side being right or wrong. You can't make that call. You can't be that judge. You haven't worked for it. You haven't dealt with it. It's not personable enough to you for you to be able to decide if you know what is right and what is wrong. That is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. There's no, there's no other way to say it. We globally need to take a reality check. We need to take some time off the internet. And we need to, we need to, we need to shut our mouths. We need to be quiet. It's time now to let people who actually care about this conflict, who are involved in it directly, give you the facts of what's going on. It's time for us to be able to tell you what's happening. And it's time for you to sit down and listen. It's time for you to do your research and to learn. It's time for you to ask questions and not attack. It's not the time for you to come to conclusions. And it's definitely not the time for you to feel like you know what's going on because you don't, because none of us do. And you definitely do not. And that's the truth. And if you want to deny it, if you want to, if you want to pretend like that's not, that's not reality, then you're living in an illusion. You're not okay. I don't know when I'm coming back. I don't know when I'm gonna make videos again. I don't know what I'm gonna make a video about. I'm mentally, emotionally, physically shattered from everything that's going on. And I don't even feel like a human being anymore. I'm glued to my phone all day, spending hours just watching the most horrific things, trying to help out in the very tiny, small, insignificant ways that I can. Most importantly, I truly, for the first time in my entire life, I've dealt with situations like this before that were much more minor than this. I truly don't feel safe. And it's not just me, it's all of us. All Jews right now feel unsafe. I don't feel safe to go travel. I don't feel safe to do my job. I don't feel 100% safe to make this video, but I feel like I need to. And, and, and that's it. That's what I'm dealing with. That's what I know, that's what I feel. I'm not gonna tell you in this video, go support a cause, go donate, go, cause fuck it. If you're not involved, don't be involved. If you wanna support, support silently. Sit in your comfortable home and support silently. Let the big boys and the big girls do their job. And don't, don't start picking sides. You want to believe in freedom fighters? Believe in freedom fighters in silence. You want to believe in the Israeli army? Believe in the Israeli army in silence. Just shut your mouth. If it's so much a debate for you, shut up. If it's so unclear for you, shut up. I'll do the talking for you. I love you guys a long time. Goodbye.